Hey, hey everybody, welcome back again to a little Austin Sports Weekend with the man Austin himself here. We are back again, had a little bit of a break there, but we are we are back again to talk sports. If uh, personal reasons. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, a little personal reason, but we are but we are back again. Thanks again for SevereTV.com for setting us up here in studio. And thanks again for Autographs Plus for sponsoring us. Dropped us off a couple little cool helmets again. Got a Jalen Hot sign helmet over there and a Jalen Wright sign helmet over here. So that's pretty cool. Do you want to go ahead and yes, uh, get into this? We uh, need to jump into what we're doing. We'll start out always with a little the news bulletin. The news bulletin. Breaking news. What you got for us, Howard Austin? Clemson basketball. It took them a while. They've extended their head coach, Brad Brownell. For five years extra after the Elite Eight run last year. Well, yeah, if you can get to the Elite Eight, you're doing some pretty good uh, basketball coaching. So that's that's not too bad. They've probably been leaning on their football program for so long they didn't pay much attention to the basketball program, didn't they? But on to, touching on to more basketball, what, um, what you got? Pittsburgh's basketball head coach Jeff Capel got extended through 2029-30. He's been he's he's been a pretty good coach too, ain't he? He was an assistant under Mike Shashevsky at Duke before Pitt hired him. That's always a good thing. Being associated with Coach K is never a bad thing. I don't know if you'll ever coach as good as Coach K, but... That's a hard achievement. It'll be a hard achievement, but uh, learning from him is definitely not a bad thing. What else you got there for us? Uh, staying on to college hoops, uh, Auburn and Purdue have approved a home-and-home -home series starting this season and next year. Well, that should be, that should be pretty good. Uh, Purdue will be Zach Edilus. They'll have to fill that ga that gaping hole left behind. That's a that's a pretty pretty big. I mean, literally pretty big and figuratively pretty big too, because he was a huge chunk of their uh, scoring and a huge chunk of their uh, team there. How do you think? How do you think Purdue will do without him? He was well, a, he was a huge part of their offense. Yeah, but with Matt Painter, he's been very consistent over Painter there. Painter is pretty, been pretty consistent. He's he's had him to the attorney quite a few years in a row, but with Zach Eady. So we'll just have to see how good he is outside of Zach Eady because it's a totally different game coaching a big man and then coaching a without a big A bunch of man. supporters. Yeah. What else you got there for us? Uh, Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers continue to have a fallout with their contract, so he's demanded a trade. I think he asked for a trade once once before, didn't he? And now he's asked one according to it again here. He's they, a, can't, they can't seem to figure out a contract. He's a big part of their offense, but uh, his position, which is? Wide receiver. They got four or five wide receivers there that are really, really good, so... Maybe that's what maybe that's what they're saying is you know we've got four good wide receivers. If one of them steps out, maybe it ain't that be that bad. But that's normally how a lot of these teams go downhill. They undervalue their stars. Yes, that's what happens. But the 49ers are so rich with talent. But that's what I'm saying. That's they got a they got a this is a must win next year. Their offensive in, their offensive talent is so good. They need to win soon, the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl or yeah. bust is what they need to do. Yeah. The only good thing about it, if IU does go, our boy, John Jennings, Jennings might get more, get, he touch, get a, more he, touches. He may play a bigger role, and that would be cool to see. But what else you got there for us? Bill Belichick joins inside the NFL since he can't get another coaching job, apparently. Oh, that's cool. Uh, honestly, uh, he might have some knowledge. He's been coaching for a year, 50 years. Mm -hmm. You'd think he would have, you the, have knowledge? Yeah, and he's got a little more street cred now, too, since he's got that, what, 30-year-old girlfriend <laughs> or whatever he's prancing around with. Now. Gosh. Uh, so, uh, so uh, no, no, seriously, though, he's got, uh, if anybody's got knowledge of the game of football, uh, it's Bill I Belichick. think it would be Mr. Bill Belichick. Oh, I also mm -hmm. saw today, too, that you may not saw, this was just a, a Cobb retired. And uh, he's joining the SEC media. He's joining uh, the uh, sideline, not the sideline, but the media for uh, for them too. So uh, he's uh, he's actually a Tennessee boy out of uh, Alcoa, Tennessee. So that'll be so that's so that's pretty cool to, to see him on there. Uh, and uh, last up, but certainly not least, 
the long awaited revive the the long awaited revival of EA Sports College Football 25 has come. Mm. Everybody is waiting for that. And so far the reviews are positive, very positive. <sighs> we got positive reviews. We got we got NCAA 25 not 14 25 and uh, the graphics are spectacular uh, there is a stadium entrance team entrance for every team for every team they took two years they made an entrance for, for every, every team. single team and has they their gave special commentator booths there's more than one set of commentators there's two or three yeah so there's different commentators there's not games there's night there's games. Day there's, games. You can make it snowy. You can make it rain. You can make it windy. You can actually draft players too, and you could lose <laughs> players to other teams taking them from you. Yep. It's actually they put a lot of effort. In. We we have seen a few little uh, funny <laughs> little glitches, <laughs> little sorts, funny glitches. But that but happens. That is honestly that's one of the one of my favorite parts of. All of the sports games, there's the little glitches. We know, you know, whenever they get tackled and they're six feet off the air, laying on the ground, <laughs> that's always funny to me. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt the game. No, it, it just, it, it's, it's, uh, it's actually pretty funny. But so, it has arrived, and most of most of the young uh, star players have also opted in now. Uh, Mr. Manning did finally, so uh, Arch is in. Our guy Nico's in. Uh, so yeah, it's. Fantastic. Now we need a baseball one and a yeah. basketball one. Uh, I, I, can you imagine the potential for a March Madness game <sighs> with CBS-style graphics? NCAA Madness tw 26. That's what we need. We, we need, need this game to be successful. For yeah. this. I, I feel like this is the big keystone. If 25 football is it's successful, a massive success, massive success, they'll have to I, look at They'll others. have to bring basketball next. They will have to bring basketball next. Uh, that is all on my bulletin board here. Oh no, that's cool. We can just go ahead and go over the uh, uh, the uh, the NBA draft a little bit. Just just talk about some of the biggest players that went. Uh, a Kentucky guy went number three. Uh, three, uh, Mr. Uh, Reed Shepard, who Shepherd. was very highly rated. Yeah, he was he wasn't that highly rated during the season, but when he did his tryouts, uh, scouts loved him. His scouts fell in love with him and he jumped from maybe first round to top five to number three in the country uh he looks like a really good kid too he's really he, he's playing in the summer league right now and he looks really good playing in the summer league too houston took him third overall if you're wondering what team took him mm -hmm. yeah so so he's looking pretty good and houston could use some scoring they really could so so that was good for uh, Houston. Standing, uh, standing inside the SEC, our guy Dalton Connect fell to the Lakers at 17. He was picked to go top five at the, at the latest top eight, but because of his age, he's 23. And they people, said people thought that he was too old. I thought that was a little crazy because most of your teenagers that you bring into uh, the NBA take about three, three to four years to develop into the player you want. Did. Kobe Bryant, did Kobe right Bryant, now. did Kobe Bryant immediately year one go out and dominate? No, he had to take time. He had it to take time. three years until he became a dominant force. Almost all young players take three or three or four. You got to cook the steak. You can't just so eat it raw. Why not take a player who is day one game ready, and multiple multiple people, multiple multiple NBA talents. Announcer, sportscaster said he's game ready right now, but he fell to 17. And the Lakers, he lost, and a, the, he lost a whole lot of money by doing that. But I think he fell into the perfect situation. And I heard that the Lakers GM at the time, he was the acting GM. I don't know. I think LeBron's mm -hmm. the GM over there. I think he is too. But, uh, yeah. He Rob Palenka did say that he would have drafted Connect. If, earlier if the Lakers had that pick. If he had a top ten pick, he would have took they Connect. would have drafted Connect. So them falling to seventeen was the, the his best wish he's ever had <laughs> drafted. <laughs> which is spectacular. <laughs> and the Lakers needed scoring. 
and uh, take the pressure off. Mm -hmm. The connect can take the pressure off. He takes the pressure because if you leave him wide open, he's a walking basket. That's what all the fans. He has been playing in the uh, summer league, and he's been scoring around he's been scoring twenty points. Twenty. He, he's between fifteen to twenty-five points every game, with three or four assists, four or five assists, three or four rebounds, four or five rebounds. He's been killing it in preseason. Uh, uh, despite the Summer other league. draft pick that they have, that gets mm -hmm. a lot of attention for... They did pick Brawny. Uh, we knew they would. We can't say anything about them picking Brawny because it's Le LeBron there. Uh, I don't think he, there's he any would, argument against that. No, he's he, he, he's been doing okay. But he's been uh, he struggled a erratic little bit. a little bit. He had uh, he had his best game last night. He scored 12 points, nine in the first half, and hit the uh, game tying three pointer with like three minutes left in the game. Uh, so he had his best game last night. Yeah, I think he's going to be a steak. And uh, you got to yeah. cook the steak. He, I think he has potential. I wish he would have stayed in college college one more, one more year to, to instead be instead of having it's literally the most raw piece of steak he out is there definitely, right now. Yeah. That's my favorite analogy for players like that. Time will tell if he'll be good or not, to, to be honest. Uh, I think he might have came out early just so he would have a couple of years to play with his dad while his dad, because his dad's on what, like a, another two-year contract? He's basically with just, I think he's only got two years left before he hangs it up, so. Yeah. The, uh, LeBron did say that he wanted to play with his son. Yeah, so so I ain't going to say anything about it. LeBron wants to play with his son. His son came over. We knew it was going to happen. Uh, I'm just glad that Dalton fell to a place that he has a – he's got a chance. He will come off the bench probably to start, but he's got a chance to work his way into a starting position year one. And to play two years in the Lakers system – it's not a bad thing. I mean, people are, there's going to be eyes on him. Because it's L.A. Because it's L.A. and it's LeBron. People are going to see him and see how good he is. He's not going to be hidden in some crappy team. Like the Pistons. Like the Pistons. Or, <laughs> thank God he didn't go to the Pistons. But, yeah, so he's, not, so he's going to be seen. And they gave him the number four. So now he's connect. Four. Which is marketing genius. Marketing genius right there. That's, that's He's got to be in front of the camera, and his name's Connect Four. So, hooray. All right, we'll just jump into a couple quick little little uh, Tennessee tidbits because we got to talk Tennessee. Congrats again to Tennessee winning the World Series in baseball. A month, uh, a month after. <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful, though. Uh, I'm, I'm still living on the glow of that. I mean, our first national championship in baseball. Spectacular. Tennessee had uh, more draft picks in baseball than uh, any other team in the top three rounds. I think it was the top three rounds. Uh, had they had the number eight player overall in SEMO, uh, Blake went uh, to the Brewers. To the to the uh, to the uh, Brewers. Uh, to just again, I always got to brag on Tennessee a little bit because I'm a Tennessee boy. Uh, the if you as I like this, if you were a season ticket holder for for Vol football, Vol hoops, and Vol baseball this year, at home their combined record was sixty and seven. So you got to see some W's this year, in the men's basketball, baseball, and football. That was a, that's that is a point eight nine. That's a ninety percent win record in twenty three twenty five. So that was just wonder, 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 wonderful. Uh, let's see here what else I got. Uh, college, uh, college football's top ten new starting quarterbacks. The number one new starting quarterback in the list is? Nico. Nico. So there's a lot of – and uh, he put on a lot of what – he's put on uh, some muscle. From what – you know, he was – you know, people saw him last year thought maybe he's a little lean for the SEC. I, I think he's put on around 20, 25 pounds of muscle in the offseason. He, and he's looking – He's looking quite a bit good there. He's, I mean, he's looking uh, quite good there. Uh, the, 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 back to Christian Moore, the Tennessee single season home run record list after the 24 season. Christian Moore, number one in the history with 34. Dylan, Dylan Dryling jumped in to num tied to number three with 23. Billy Amick tied number three with 23. Uh, Blake Burke uh, t tied for number seven with 20. 
uh, Kavar's Tears tied with 20. So we had one, two, three, four, five of the top home run records in the history of Tennessee baseball came this season, and it was supposed to be a down year. So that's pretty good. And there's been quite a few uh, uh, people pick uh, Tennessee and the transfer portal. We've had uh, the number one player in the transfer portal, the number two player in the transfer portal. I know the number five player in the transfer portal. I th if I'm not mistaken, we've had five of the top ten in the transfer portal come over. We had a Louisville kid come over to us. And uh, two from Mississippi, from Ole Miss, uh, and quite a few others. I know two of the uh, kids that was picked in the draft, high school players, uh, that were picked in the draft decided not to go into the draft after their pick and are coming to Tennessee. Uh, so Tennessee baseball should be right back up on top. At least, at least they should be a, a preseason top ten going in and will have the, the uh, ability to take themselves up to the top pretty, 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 pretty quick. A uh, couple more little quick things. Yeah, there's the Here's the uh, list. We had the pitcher, uh, Tanner Franklin, infielder Gavin, uh, Kylene, 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 uh, first base outfielder, Eric, I can't pronounce his name either, Radisak, 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 third baseman, Andrew Fisher, pitcher Liam Dole, and uh, our uh, good friend of uh, the show, Hunter Inslee, is returning as the center fielder. So uh, Tennessee baseball should be right back, right back up on top. At least they should have a really good chance to be right back up on top. Uh, so this is uh, going to be a, another good year for Tennessee sports coming up. And uh, one more little pat on the back of Tennessee. Tennessee is the only school in the country with a top 20 pick in the WNBA. That was Rakea Jackson. A top 20 pick in the NBA, which was number 17, Dalton Connect. And a top, actually a top 10 pick in the MLB. That was number eight, Christian Bohr. The only other school to come close was UConn, who had two players picked in the top 20. Tennessee had a top 20 in all three. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of wondering how the Angels are going to develop Christian Moore, though. <sighs> well, they have great hitters. There's no question about their hitting. But I don't know if I trust their owner, Artie Moreno. I don't know if I do either, to be honest. So we'll just have to wait and see. But anyways, that's, that's, about, all the, that's about all the time we got here. So uh, thanks again for SevereTV.com for setting us up here in studio. Thanks again for uh, Autographs Plus for sponsoring us. I actually think the... Hunter Inslee is going to be signing in the Pigeon Forge store this Saturday if you catch this video but before Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. So uh, be sure and check that out. But thanks again for Severe TV. Thanks again for Autographs Plus sponsoring us. And uh, we will see you next week. See you next week.